because he just associates humans with being fed. <laughs> Today we're going to do a halter breaking video with a, uh, uh, a baby colt that we have here. Uh, he's a little stud colt. And normally um, you want to halter break your babies when they're anywhere from a month to, you know, two months old. Now with this baby, uh, I kind of, I got busy and got tied up and I didn't get him halter broke. He's almost four months old now. And, um, you know, he hasn't been handled because he just associates humans with being fed. <laughs> and as you can see right there, <laughs> um, this can get a little dangerous. Um, yeah, because he was thinking about jumping on me right there. You wanna you wanna halter break your baby uh, in a fairly small area so he can't get away from you. And um, if it wasn't for the camera, I would actually put a divider in here and just make it 12 by 12 so he was even more com confined. He's gonna want to come to this corner because this is where his mother is. I'm gonna use that to my advantage because he's gonna want to come this way now. Normally, if he was a smaller baby, I would get close enough to where I could put my left arm in front of his neck, around his chest, and my right arm around his butt, and maybe get a hold of the base of his tail, and I could cradle him like this and hold him. He's so big now, I'm not so sure I can do that. I'm going to have to kind of finesse my way uh, into uh, getting my hands on him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to uh, touch him enough to you know, give him confidence that it's okay to be touched. Now I've already smacked him with the lead rope a couple times to, to uh, keep him from jumping on me, so he's a little, gonna be a little leery of me. So if I come at him like I really want him, it's gonna make him leery and he's gonna, it's, it's gonna make him wanna run away from me. So what I gotta do, What I've got to do is take and get him curious enough to want to come to me. So I'm going to kneel down so I look less intimidating. Got to be careful I don't let him kick me. But see, just kneeling down here has got his curiosity going. Now, I'm going to advance a little bit, I'm going to walk away. And see how that kind of draws him to me? If I act like I want him too bad, it's going to spook him. So I advance a little bit, he looks at me, and I walk away. I've got to appear to be non-threatening. I'm going to advance a little bit. Let him sniff me, I'm going to walk away. Let him think that me touching him or him touching me is okay. If I stay here and try to force the issue, it's going to scare him. I need to, I need to retreat, I need to get away from him before he gets panicked. Which means I get just a little bit of a touch, and then I walk away. Okay, so I've got my left arm in front of his neck, and I got my right arm behind him, and I'm going to try to keep him here if I can. I'm just going to go with him. Good, and I don't, and I don't, I'm not latched onto him like I'm, like I'm squeezing him. It's like I'm putting a barrier up here in front of him and a barrier behind him, and I'm kind of keeping him within that barrier. Now, I'm going to grab hold of his tail if I can. Bring his tail up. Okay. Now, if you can see, I've got the base of his tail in my right hand and my arm in front of his neck here. Now, if he starts to act up, I'm going to pull up on his tail. That'll kind of immobilize him. That almost act, kind of acts like a twitch. It doesn't hurt him. But you can immobilize one that way. Now I can tell you right now, now that I'm close to him, he's big enough I know I can't, I know I can't hold him. 
So I'm going to have to work fast. While I've got him here, I'm just going to start getting him used to being rubbed. See what I'm doing with my hand? I'm just kind of rubbing him. Good. Now, I've dropped my rope. I'm going to kneel down. And I want to get this neck rope on him to start the control. The reason I'm not going to try to get a halter on him right away is because if you try to pull a horse, a, a baby colt, by its head with a halter right off the bat, you're going to cause him to flip over backwards nine times out of ten, or at least cause him to fight real bad. But you can put a neck rope on one. Okay, so you see what I did? I just took a normal piece of rope, tied a knot in it, and now I've got something that I can pull this colt with. And I'm going to let him feel this rope. Now that he's over his initial fear, he's not, he's not too bad. Now, everything I do with this rope is going to be pulls and releases, okay? I'm going to shorten it up here a little bit. He's standing pretty good. He's wanting to stand here because his mother's right here. Okay. Now, I'm going to protect myself from getting kicked by being ready to block his hindquarters with my right hand. I'm going to bring his front end to me and keep his rear end away from me. Pull, release. See, if I have this rope way up here by his ears, he's just going to bend his, his head. The rope needs to be down here by the base of his neck so I can pull his shoulders to me. Now he's going to start running backwards. He's going to try to get away from me. And when he does, I go out to the end of this rope to give him more distance. Because part of his running away, trying to get away from me, is I'm so close in front of him, it's kind of, it's kind of scaring him. Okay? Good. So I'm going to pull him, pull release, pull release. Good. Now he's, he's trying to turn away from me. You see, I got him real quick before he, before he could get the front end away from me. If I don't do that quick and he gets hit the front end away from me and gets that angle on me, there's no way I can hold him. The areas that you want to be careful of when you're getting this baby used to being touched is normally they don't like to be touched on their belly. You, can, you know, they're going to want to kind of panic or kick when you touch their belly, and they don't like to be touched on their legs. And that's just a natural born instinct. So when I'm here, and I'm right in position to get him used to, to have his legs touched, just like I did when I was trying to catch him, I'm going to advance and retreat, which means I'm going to go down his leg to the point where it's okay, and then take my hand off his leg. He needs to think that it's okay and for me to quit before he panics. And little by little, I'll just get a little farther down his leg. There we go. There we go. So before he has a chance to freak out, bring my, leg, my hand right back up. Okay, let's stop the video so I can give you some important information. Uh, the video that you just watched is a short excerpt taken from my training course titled Training the Foal and Weanling. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can get the entire course on my website. It's available uh, on online streaming video or DVDs, you know, either either one. And, you know, in that training course, I mean, you'll learn a ton of stuff. You'll see how to teach your baby to, to lead, how to teach him to go on a lunge line, uh, how to be good to have his feet trimmed, fly spray, move all their body parts, and most important, how to train them to be tied up as safely as possible. I mean, this is a big one. I mean, if your baby's going to get hurt, I mean, this is this is where it's probably going to happen. And I show you how to do it in as safe a way as possible. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to link to a video of this baby as a five-year-old trained horse. You know, he's trained as a cutting horse and a rain cow horse. You, know, you might find it interesting to see how he turned out. And, uh, oh yeah, well, and while I'm thinking about it, 
I, I do need to give you a warning. If you do want your baby to be a top performance horse, there are psychological things that you might not be aware of that can really mess him up. And I discuss uh, that in the training course. Um, and when I do, you, you really need to take it seriously because there's a, a bunch of horse clinicians that tell you to do this when the baby's born and you do not want to do it. I mean, if you do, it'll, it'll mess him up. Um, it's okay to do it after he's several months old, but just don't do it when they tell you to do it. Anyway, uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, click on that like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell if you want uh, YouTube to notify you every time I upload a new video. Uh, also, you'll find additional information and links in the uh, description box below the video. Oh yeah, and don't forget to go to my website and get that free membership. It's a uh, 30 day free membership, which you'll get access to all kinds of good stuff. Uh, I mean, you'll, you'll learn a bunch. And I'll have a link to that down below also. Okay, so now wait for the the uh, the link to pop up, uh, the video image to pop up, and you click it, and you can go watch the baby as 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 a five year old. Okay, that's all for now. Take care.